those exciting, fun memories from back before the internet and idiot PC culture when it was okay to do mock, hair, mock 2 with your hair on fire and chase your flight instructor who's a hot blonde. What's up, people? Video number two on the Top Gun Maverick build bike. The 1984 Kawasaki Ninja GPZ 900, which we're going to be painting black and red, just like Maverick's bike from Top Gun. Anyway, so let's go over number two. I just got back from uh, BG Motorcycles with Rod, who's a real nice guy there. Uh, reason I did that, I don't, frankly, have the tools to put a motorcycle up in the air with, so <laughs> that was very helpful. Anyway, he yanked the uh, wheels off, got rid of the junk old tires, which are all dry and cracked and rotted and disastrous, even though they had tread. I'm trying to, to get you guys to be safe with tires. So it needed some fresh rubber, but that gave me an opportunity to take the wheels, clean them up here, and repaint them. So in doing this build, I wanted to make something very nice that you all could also do at home in your own garage without spending a freaking fortune. And in doing that, since you're not spending money and making it flow like water because you like throwing that around and you think you're going to win Pebble Beach and you're a real person that wants something nice, we have to weigh the balance of what is an acceptable or good enough quality level. So for me, I wanted that to be something that is a beautiful bike I could ride. It reflects exactly what the Top Gun motorcycle was. Actually nicer because the one the movie was apparently like all chewed up and made to look beat up. But we, we want it to be a little nicer like we all imagine it on screen. Anyway, and frankly, if I want to park it in my foyer at home, I don't want my wife to have a, a very good argument as to why not. So it should probably look pretty. Word of the wise for you young men, make your motorcycles look pretty so you too can park it in your living room or foyer. I'll let you know how that goes. I'm aiming for it. So anyway, the wheels. I uh, did a quick cleanup, and frankly, you know, I don't have a sandblaster. I'm not really sure where one's available closely, and I, I need to get this thing done. I've got a life, I got stuff to do. I know it's winter in Ohio, but you know, there's things to do. I got genius scratch to build. So what can I do quickly that'll be decent? So got them all apart, cleaned it all up. I had a stainless steel wire brush, a small one. Uh, obviously I opened the windows for ventilation and I had gloves, and I had, um, like a, what did I use, lacquer thinner, enamel thinner, some, some just basically economy thinner. Got that on there with the rag, really wiped it down, it kind of gets rid of the grease and such, and with the stainless steel brush, I could really brush it hardcore to knock off any corrosion that we had, and just get a decent surface. I don't need to be a total freak and sandblast it, even though that'd be a really good thing for stuff to adhere to. And then the paint that I utilize, which I'm actually quite happy with, is available, I'm just gonna run over here and get it. It's available at basically any uh, AutoZone or Auto Parts store, it's just a, it's an epoxy paint. And I used it because I thought they'd be a little bit more durable than kind of that quickie lacquer job stuff you can find in a lot of places. And also it says that you don't need primer so it should adhere well. So that, that makes sense for something to do that'd be quick and durable. Now what I found out is, one, I think that's the case and I did a good enough job of prepping it because when they put, mounted the new tires, on the wheels, they didn't get chipped up, which says to me it's pretty good. Also, the finish feels nice and shiny and smooth and hard and it went well, but you gotta use a proper temperature range and it's not in here, it's freaking cold because I'm in Ohio and the weather's going to pot. So I had a little space heater and I took two jack stands with a stick, but it was made of metal, so it's technically two, and <laughs> put the wheel on it so I could spin it gently after it, has the, it was starting to cure and just let it be a little bit warmer. And once it initially had its you know, nice um, coating on it, it wasn't fish eyeing or doing anything dumb, give it a second coat, and it actually did a really, really good job. And it, it looks quite good. I think it's gonna last for as long as I'll ever ride this until maybe another 35 years go by and it's time to restore it again. So that long dictation about how I chose to do the wheels is, you know, every idiot and their brother in the world want to tell you, oh, you did a terrible job at restoring that car. Oh, you could have done that well better. Oh. Those people are the kind of people who never get anything done. Shut up. <laughs> There's something called good enough with resources and time to get the job done. And you know what I want? I want a Top Gun Maverick bike to ride around on, buy a yacht club, and maybe use too much tongue one evening. I'm sorry, was that too much information? So anyway, that's what it's all about. Where do we go from here? So fresh rubber. The wheels look nice. I cleaned up the rotors. They were half decent. Uh, basically used a uh, wire brush on my drill and uh, I put a little screw in a table so they wouldn't move out of the way. Cleaned them up and then, and this is going to sound totally kind of like redneck. And no, that's not a slam on rednecks. Get over yourself. 
I just sprayed carefully high temp silver paint in the middle where it was likely to rust. And then the little bit that get on the braking surface, I just wiped off with thinner. Oh, I'm sorry. You over restorers want to say that I should have taken forever and masked it off in waste paper. Get over yourself. There's ways to do things quick that work just fine. Anyway, the bike got a brand new chain as well. I'm trying to think, what else did I do to this thing? Did we do anything else? I really can't take credit. I actually paid the guys to do it at BJ Motorcycles. So sometimes you gotta weigh the resource thing there and they did a great job. So that's where we went from there. Also, I ripped off those uh, junk Harley Davidson shiny grips that are stupid. And I just got some, some basic grips here from the guys at the local motorcycle store. You know, I could have ordered something from Amazon or gone to a big place, but I like supporting local guys because they help you out now and then. It's just a pro taper. Honestly, it's more of a motor, like an off-road kind of grip. But frankly, it looks like something to be around in the 80s. I'm not even sure if this is gonna fit worth a darn. Let's see here. You know what, no, that's gonna look just fine. That's gonna fit just fine, so we'll do that. And it supports the local guys. All right, so beyond that, now we're getting into the stage where, it, oh, that's right, we also changed the oil and whatnot. So it's got fresh oil change and seems to be all right. Everything's happy, running pretty good, even though it's cold out. So we got the cosmetic side of this, which relates to the tank and the panels. Um, that need to come off and be refinished in black and red. So we're gonna get to that. The secondary part of the cosmetics are all of the black plastic that is aged and turned this kind of gray and oxidized look, which some of you are very nice to give me some tips out there. There's some people that mentioned you can use a heat gun to heat them up. Actually, I might just try that right now. Let's just try it, why not? I'll experiment, we'll see if this is a good idea or I'll melt my bike down. So you can try a heat gun apparently, people have said. Somebody said I should rub it in, I don't know, some kind of oil, which I don't think I'm gonna do, because if I wanted to refinish that or do something with, that doesn't seem like, doesn't seem like the move I wanna make. Not to mention the fact that dirt and, dirt and dust would stick to it. So there's the heat technique, okay? Or you can clean it up and thin it, use like a thinner and a wax and grease remover and stuff like that, and shoot it with a, like a flat black trim paint. So this is real world, people. I am doing this right now. We are experimenting on my Top Gun bike. That's why I walked off camera. There's no camera crew here. I'm a guy doing a thing, just like you guys are possibly a guy or gal doing a thing. And I might burn my bike down. Maybe it'll catch on fire, but at least you get to see it on YouTube. All right, heat gun. Is that hot? Okay, that's hot. All right, I'm gonna try it on this. Uh, this, uh, what is this, turn signal here. I don't know if there's like a proper cloth to do this with. I'm just gonna rub it with my hands. Oh, Casey, you're just... It's getting kind of creepy here. My motorcycle's getting an old fashioned. Oh man. You know, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Okay, let's try it here. I don't think you guys can see it. I'm gonna try it. Two at heat gun. I'm warming it up. Ooh, wait. Maybe that is doing a thing. I mean, that does kind of do a thing. But if you get it hot enough to make that work, you run the risk of melting and doing something funky to it. And the finish isn't gonna be exactly the way it was originally. So I think what I'm gonna try next is. I'm just gonna, when I take these off, I'm going to clean them up with a wax and grease remover really nice, and I'm gonna shoot them with that satin black trim paint. It's gonna get a dead, get it, give it a dead even finish, and I think make it look about as new as possible. Of course, I wanna prepare it real well so it doesn't chip off and then look like absolute garbage later. But uh, let's go ahead and take one of these panels off and kinda see what's underneath here and see how good and or bad it is and show you guys on the camera. Because, so now it's decision making time with the build. And what I mean to say is this, the thing that everybody notices about a car or a motorcycle or just about anything in life, which is a shame, is how something looks, which is a shame because that's superficial. But in the sense of a car or motorcycle, it's not really superficial because that's a major component of it. So what we all have to do when we're trying to build something that is economic, I can't do anything. When uh, you're trying to build something that's economic, or makes a good sense for you, or have something really cool without breaking the bank, how do you do that? Where is the line? Where is the balance? So, for me, I've got 
two basic choices here and then a combination thereof with either. One, if you want to take something like this to a professional um, painter, an auto body place or something like that, well, one, they need to make money because they're trying to make a living, okay? And you got to keep that in mind. How does this come off of there? Oy vey. They're trying to make a living, okay? So you're gonna pay money, and you should because they got a lot of expertise. Okay, so this looks pretty good. You know, the frame's decent. There's not really much in this way of surface corrosion. Should be able to pretty much just clean up that. Gonna flush the coolant. I can, uh, we're gonna be f flushing the brakes, which by the way, relating to the brakes, that's a big thing coming up. The next thing I'm gonna do is order stainless steel, brand new braided brake hoses for the front and rear. Uh, these are the old rubber ones. There's potentially going to be some squishiness that comes from them just being softer. It can expand a little bit. It'll look nice. It'll clean it up and it's a major safety thing, especially with having new tires is a, is a great thing. So here's one of the plastic panels and we're going back to, do you choose to do a professional painter? Okay. So it's in good shape. You know, there's some scratches is a thing, but, um, it appears there's a, a clear coat here and in some places is worse than others. It's starting to flake a little like around the edges of the decal where it says Ninja and elsewhere. So it's going to come down to how is it prepared? Um, because if you paint it and do a great job, you can have the shiniest, most beautiful mirror finished paint in the world. But if it doesn't adhere to what you're painting well, it starts flaking up. It, it's garbage. It's not going to matter, right? And uh, this uh, pinstripe here also looks to be underneath the clear coat. So that's something that you'd want to remove if you're doing a real good job. In a movie, it doesn't matter as much because you don't see this stuff on the camera. Okay, so discussion time relating to the importance of doing a professional job or doing it yourself. Uh, a professional job obviously should be really good, but it all comes down to what is the relationship with you ha that you have with the person doing this. Frankly, most auto body places are not gonna wanna do a project like this. It just doesn't make sense on a business aspect. It's not an insurance claim. It's not something like that. They have a relationship with you. They want to try to make a price that you like, but then they got to try to make money. And a motorcycle has got all these stupid little parts that, you know, you have to look out after and clean and prepare. And they have to put all the same care into this that they would into a car. And in many ways, it's more difficult because you've got all these different curves and angles and lines to sand and scuff and shoot and maybe tiny little bits of a surface rust or something. So a project like this, the average person out there or car guy or gal might think, oh, that's not a big deal. I could paint that in a day. Well, yeah, in a manner of speaking, you could, but that's a big pain in the butt to a professional painting place and you have to realize it. So you need to have a good relationship with a place like that. And oftentimes if you have a decent relationship and they feel that you respect them and their time, they'll, they'll hook you up basically. And they'll do something like this on the side. Uh, I got a nice little body shot close by I spoke to, and this is something that uh, the woman actually that does the painting would do on the weekends. It would take me a little bit longer. So don't, don't expect to get something cheap from amazing craftsmen uh, and have it done right away when they're not, you know, making a great living off of it. These are things you've got to realize when you're doing it. But I do have total confidence that they'd be able to do an absolutely exquisitely beautiful job. But we've got to weigh, uh, weigh the pros and cons here. One, I've got to pay them for their time and money and expertise and labor, okay? More than just the materials. So it's going to cost more that way. The finish is going to be beautiful. It's going to be really gorgeous. Going to love it. But it's going to take longer because it's something they would likely do on this side. Then it's going to be a number of weeks, could be a month. And frankly, if they get busy, who knows? It could end up being double that time and it ends up being early next year. So that, that's a little tricky for me when I wanna make sure I can get something done and uh, look after it in that way. And that's, that's a tough thing for you guys when you're getting out there too. Now, if you have some painting talent and you're pretty good with a spray can, truthfully, if you're pretty good at knowing, you could do a very pretty job with sting, single stage paint that you can buy at any auto parts store off the shelf. Typically that's gonna be some sort of lacquer variant, but there's others in enamels and such. And it may be a little softer, you may not get that super deep clear coat shine, but there's some positives to it. One, it's easy to touch up and fix if you hurt your bike or you crack it or you bump it or drop it or something like that. Two, the colors are readily available at auto parts stores around. Um, and three, you can do that with your own time and labor. So I'm kind of weighing, do I go the direction of the professional route or do I go that way? 
it's tricky. I'm gonna have to come back to that and let you guys know because frankly with my time, I'm a one man show here in terms of my own personal YouTube channel and whatnot. So I kind of like to just give it to them and say, here's some money, but who out there, including myself, has money to just throw at stuff like that? And are we learning that much? So I'll decide here later if it's gonna be that direction or if it's the other, but these are things for you guys to think of. Now, if you do choose to paint your own bike with stuff you can get at an auto parts store, it is possible to do quite a nice job. I helped Peyton, one of the students from earlier this year, do his motorcycle build, and his tank we shot with basically the dupla color paint off the shelf. It was single stage metallic blue, and we did a great job priming it. Uh, and frankly, it looks really pretty. Uh, it's most especially if you do a single stage, if you get enough paint on there, you can wet sand it and then polish it for a really great shine. The Ducati in the background is actually a, uh, a, uh, it has a, it's a two part. It's got a catalyst in it, acrylic enamel, which is a single stage that I shot with a professional gun. And I got a little overzealous on the tank and had a couple of runs. So I uh, wet sanded those out and had to polish the tank. Uh, would have been easier if I would have just laid it down like the rest of it was really shiny. You didn't have to put all that extra work in. But you can, in fact, do a really pretty, really nice bike in that way. Um, and what is going to be gorgeous. And then there also comes into the argument of what is over-restored. If the Maverick bike was insanely, flawlessly glossy with like clear coat for miles and you clear coated all the stickers and it was just perfect, you know what? Honestly, that wouldn't feel real to me. That, that doesn't feel like a real motorcycle that a fighter pilot in the 80s would have. It wouldn't be that nice. That's too nice. That's for those people that make a bunch of money and they want to pretend that they're so cool and have somebody make a thing for their collection. They're like, yeah, I've got the Top Gun bike. I'm like, no, you spent a lot of money on this thing that's way too shiny that doesn't really reflect what the Top Gun bike was, but you don't get that because you have too much money and not enough talent or time. But I digress. <laughs> This is all for you guys. We can do something together. You don't have to have tons of money. So I feel like I'm talking myself into painting it with things at the auto parts store. So we're gonna come back to that. Beyond that on the bike, a few things. One, the, uh, the headers and the Vansenheim pipe here, they're road hard and put away wet. And because of that, that's where a little bit of surface rust is coming from. So I have to yank that off of there. I may go so simple as just to use a wire brush real hardcore, knock the loose stuff off. I'm gonna get rid of the Vance and Hines um, tag here, rivet it out, maybe just put in a couple of pop rivets to uh, plug the holes, paint the whole thing black. Because the original bike, the stock bike, had black exhaust, and it might as well look the same, but of course I like it to sound good, so I'm gonna keep that exhaust. Uh, it would be nicer, of course, to send it to a place and have them prepare it, sandblast it, ceramic, coat it, la la la, but that's spending a bunch of money, you guys. So if you're gonna be doing your thing at your home, you know, wire brushes are reasonably cleaning it up, preparing the surface, and using a high temp uh, black paint, which is available at any auto parts stores, or quite frankly, the crap you can get at the hardware store for an outside grill would look really good too. But I say that, and automotive and motorcycle people lose their minds because Casey, you're not doing some magical thing that's supposed to be expensive and, and particular and whiz-bangy to make me feel good about my ego. Get over your ego. Does it look good? Does it work? And does it ride well? Yeah, okay, great. Then why spend a lot of money we don't have to? Plus, if you do it that way, if it ever gets nicked or has an issue, you can quickly and easily touch it up yourself, which you can't do if you send someplace expensively to ceramic coat it. So hate on me if you will for saying the truth and not doing something expensive for the sake of doing it expensive, but it'll be really nice. Beyond that, You've got your aluminum parts here, these like bulkheads that hold the pegs and such, which has got some corrosion on, but it appears that we can take these off with the Allen wrenches and with a bench buffer, you know, you can clean it up or even a very fine steel wool. Very fine steel wool is good to help get your polished aluminum looking, coming back and looking at it. But you know, this is older, it's got some pitting and some corrosion, so it's gonna take a little bit more aggressive before you can start polishing it to that shine. I don't want to get insane and make it like chrome level polish because again that gets into the argument of does this really feel like a 1980s fighter pilot's bike when he's more interested in like doing Mach 2 with his hair on fire and chasing some ballsy blonde. No. So it should be a little real and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, beyond that, so we're going to do the brake lines, going to bleed those, might throw some new pads in there, but they got plenty of meat left on them. And uh, see on that, we're going to refinish the bare 
black plastic, such as the turn signals, the fenders, the inner areas back in there and all, and go from there. And frankly, guys, that's, that's the majority of what this bike needs. As you can see, the seat is off. I'm about to go take that up to my local upholstery guy which is uh, Lee's Trim, it's called here in the Toledo area. They do a great job. So find yourself these craftsmen, whether it's upholstery or paint or machinists with an engine or little motorcycle shops, because those, those people are great. And if you're respectful to them and their livelihood and their time and all, uh, and fun to be around, then they're gonna be respectful to you and help you out too. So that's my best tip here. And they're gonna help you have a great time together. Um, actually, it's kind of a funny story because Rod at the, at the little motorcycle store, I just came in and, you know, I'm a motorcycle guy to him. Hey, I like this bike and here's what I'm doing. And uh, uh, he didn't know that I, I do all this other malarkey. And uh, the other day, I, I, don't, I don't know what channel it was on, but apparently the Batmobile ended up on TV and he saw it. And he goes, wait a minute, that's that guy with the Top Gun bike. He's holding out on me. So he calls me up and he's like, yeah, I have to come by. I want to see. I'm like, all right. But... Um, yeah, just be yourself, have fun with bikes and paint or motorcycle engines or whatever. And those, those great people are there to help you out and support your local craftsmen and your local businesses. But that's where we're at, guys. In terms of cost, um, I'm starting to already push the three grand mark already because I, I paid the guys there to do it instead of having the time. But I still do have some money left over, so maybe I'm going to have to finish this bike off with paint by myself to prove that you can do it for less than three grand. Um, I know that you can but I thought it was a good idea to support my local guys and it would save me a little bit of time, which I'm glad I did because they did an ex, an, an, just a fantastic job. And also while I'm at it, the wheel bearings in this were bad. They weren't terribly expensive to replace, but those guys were well set up for pressing in some new ones and go from there. So just want to throw that out there. I hope you guys are enjoying this build. Uh, I do have to say that the Kawasaki GPZ 900 is a, is a comfortable bike to ride. To ride, it feels fun. It's got an aggressive but reasonable uh, riding position, unlike every sport bike on the planet nowadays where your freaking hands fall asleep and kills your back. Yeah, I'm old, whatever. It's, it's overkill, okay? This is nice to ride, and you know what? It sounds great too. So I think my wife will enjoy hopping on the back of it as well, and we're gonna have great times and make a lot of great memories. And uh, for me, a kid of the 80s, it's gonna bring back those exciting, fun memories from back before the internet and idiot PC culture when it was okay to do Mach, hair, Mach 2 with your hair on fire and chase your flight instructor who's a hot blonde at the time. <laughs> right? Those are good memories. Okay, in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy this. If you do and you want your buddies to build a cool bi bike like this, please share it. In the meantime, I hope you will like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time.